Hi, I'm Shane, Product Development Manager with Quick Attach. Today we're going to demonstrate our 72 inch commercial brush cutter. So on top of the deck I wanted to point out that this rib here is a 3 8 by 4 plate steel. It runs the full length of the deck so it's welded to the mounting plate on the rear and it goes directly up to the front edge. This is where most of the work is done when you're pushing brush and trees over. It ties into this other member which is made up of half inch plate steel and runs the full width of the front of the deck. Um, this gives you a very strong, a very stout, uh, robust structure to push against. It's not going to bend, it's going to be uh, long lasting and really tough. Okay, so I wanted to show you what the optional push bar looks like here. This is constructed of 3 8 inch plate steel. It's bent into an L shape. It's about 5 inches on a leg. And it's reinforced with ribs that are welded to it on the back side. And it, it generally follows the curve of the deck. So the, the nice advantage to using a push bar is that it keeps uh, the brush and the grass from collecting on top of the deck. It helps keep the, the uh, material in front of the cutter. So that makes you more productive overall. This push bar is bolted on for a couple of good reasons. One is sometimes you want to mow under trees or bushes that have low branches. You can take this off and get the, the deck underneath the tree and do a better job of cleaning up around it. Also, a lot of customers like to mow around fences, so electric fences or wood fences. And this deck is low and clean. You can get this underneath uh, very low fences with the push bar removed. The skid shoes are half inch plate steel and they run the full length of the deck. So not only does this add a lot of strength to the end plate itself, but also gives you a, a huge amount of wearability in the deck. The skid shoe is the part that's in contact with the ground almost all the time. So you want that to be heavy, you want it to be strong, and you want it to last a long time. Okay, so I want to talk about what we're mowing here in this grassy area. This is a CRP field that hasn't been tilled for uh, at least 10 years. It was planted in with native grasses, so this is uh, big blue stem grass. There's a lot of uh, invasive species like thistles out here and uh, some broom grass as well. So it, we've had a lot of rain this year, so the grass has really grown well. It's really thick and this low spot here had quite a few thistles in it. I wanted to mow this down, so I'm coming in here and just knocking it down. I'm holding the mower up about six inches off the ground because the grass is so dense and so thick that it takes a tremendous amount of power to, to mow it. Um, but this bluegrass, not only is it tall, but it's also pretty tough um, and, and really thick at the bottom. So it, it takes quite a, a, quite a bit of work to cut it off. And um, there's a lot of it in this whole area here. So the, the amount of work that we're doing is quite a bit uh, considering this is um, a 72 inch brush cutter running on standard flow. On this machine, we're running at about 21 gallons per minute. Um, so, you know, effectively you're maybe getting 20 to 25 horsepower max out at the, out at the brush mower. Um, so it's doing a really good job of cutting. I'm impressed with how clean it's cutting. That's due to the high tip speed. Um, it's also doing a good job of mulching it and spreading it around. So I wanted to point out a couple features on the backside here. Uh, this mower is equipped with a lift limit chain. This is meant to tie the frame of the mower to the frame of the skid steer loader. This is good for um, new users, beginners, or rental yards uh, to help remind the operator to keep the mower down. You don't ever want to raise the mower up to a position where you can cut material and throw it through the front door or into the cab area. You want to keep your operator safe. This helps remind the operator to keep the frame down. Okay, so there's several features I want to point out under the bottom of the deck. This is where all the hard work is done, so you want these components to be strong and robust. Uh, starting with the blades themselves, these are made up of half inch by four steel, medium carbon. They're heat treated and tested so that they're, uh, they meet safety standards for ductility. You don't want these blades to break off, so they have a certain amount of ductility built into them when they heat treat them. They also have uh, a lot of mass and a lot of length, so they're about 30 inches long on this 72 inch mower, and this blade weighs over 15 pounds. What that means is with this mower uh, hitting a high tip speed or a high RPM, we have a tremendous amount of energy stored in the blades themselves, not just the stump jumper. And when you have the energy stored in the blade, you, you can more efficiently transmit that to trees and brush. So what that means is that you can cut things down faster when you have a high energy blade. 
So I wanted to talk a little bit about this area that we've been mowing here that's brush. It's predominantly English buckthorn. Um, most of it is uh, a few years old, so it's between a quarter inch and one inch diameter. There's a few larger clumps that are up to two and three inch diameter. English buckthorn is an invasive species. It's really tough to mow. It's really hard, really tough wood. And so it takes a lot of tip speed, a lot of energy to break it down and bust it up. Uh, this mower is doing a good job of mulching the bits up, even the, the dead parts of it are splitting open. That's gonna enable the, the mulched up pieces to break down sooner. Um, I'm not so concerned about making this look pretty. We're just trying to get it knocked down and get it cleaned up. Uh, this area was previously a pasture, so that's why it's growing up really thick with this English buckthorn. The blades are bolted to the stump jumper with a special uh, cold forged bolt. It's a grade eight equivalent. They're cold forged for strength. Obviously, you want the bolt to be robust. You don't want it to break off. There are some manufacturers out there that use substandard bolts that are either machined out of bar stock or some other method. Um, I wouldn't trust those. They're gonna wear out faster. They may break. Uh, these are cold forged. They're heat treated to a grade eight standard. They are specifically made for brush cutters. Um, they are really well built. What we cut here was a, about a three inch popple tree. There was two of them side by side. Uh, just to demonstrate that you can cut these down and mulch them up fairly well. A popple tree, of course, is a softwood. Um, some of the dead ash that we were hitting earlier were really hard. When you hit them, you could tell that the whole skid steer, you know, it kind of rattled. But the popple, they cut down uh, easier and they mulch up nicer too. Um, this area that we've done here, uh, we're not going to work too hard at really mulching it down to a fine mulch because they're probably going to come back and burn it before they uh, till it up. The stump jumper itself is made up of two main pieces. The dish pan shaped part here is quarter inch plate steel that's spin formed into a dish pan shape. What this allows is the leading edge then is has a ski toe effect. And if you hit an obstruction, it'll help uh, deflect the deck and the stump jumper itself over the obstruction, which helps prevent damage and spike loads to the system. On the back side of the stump jumper, there's a one inch by four inch bar that runs the full width of the stump jumper. This is actually what the blade is bolted to. So the blade bolt goes through the dish pan and through this bar. What that means is that you have a really strong, really stiff structure to support these blades. So for the structure, we moved a lot of this structure to the bottom side for the generation three mower deck. We have a three ace by two ring that runs the full perimeter underneath. What this does is it helps stiffen the deck. Uh, instead of having ribs and structure on the top, we moved it to the bottom side to help keep the top of the deck uh, clean, makes it easier to clean off. And it also helps prevent the blades from coming up and contacting the deck itself if you should hit a large obstruction. So we talked earlier about the amount of structure we have on the top of the deck uh, with the ribs and everything. We have a fair amount of structure under the deck as well. One of the reasons we did that was to keep the top of the deck um, clean. And what that enables you to do is to clean off the top of the deck uh, much easier. It also prevents the pooling of water, which can lead to corrosion. Um, th those are a couple of problems that I've seen on other brands of mowers. If you have a lot of structure on top, it starts making uh, pools of water that can really wreck the paint finish. From this view, you can see that we have chains on the back side of the deck. This is to help prevent material from flying back at the operator and the skid steer. It just helps knock it down before it leaves the deck, takes a lot of the energy out of it, uh, helps protect uh, not only the skid steer and the tires, but also the operator. So we took the covers off here so we can see what's underneath. Uh, we wanted to talk at great length about the drive system itself because this is really important to why uh, mowers are robust, why they last a long time and why they work so well. So these easy mow commercial mowers utilize a right angle gearbox and, a, and we're using a 2000 series Eaton Charlin motor. So this is gonna give the best value in terms of performance for this type of mower. And the reason I say that is because we're using a gearbox that has an increaser in it of a speed ratio of about uh, one to two. So we're getting twice the speed out of the spindle than we are on the input side. What that means is that we're, we can use a larger displacement motor on the backside 
So a larger displacement motor is going to give you uh, better efficiency at higher flows. It's also going to run uh, slower and cooler than a smaller displacement motor that you might see on the direct drive type mowers. When you have a direct drive mower, the motor spindle and the output spindle are going the same speed, one to one speed ratio. What that means is you have to use a really small displacement motor to try to get the mower to turn fast enough to cut well. And if you're gonna cut grass and brush especially, you need a high enough tip speed to be able to cut that off cleanly and not just mash it with the blades. This is the setup that gives the best performance for those conditions. So some of the fun surprises you find when you're mowing are rocks. Um, just mowing around this dead tree here, I've already hit four rocks. And this is not uncommon around here because a lot of this land used to be pasture or farmed and people would throw the rocks over by the trees thinking they were out of the way. So I think these are all granite. I've actually uh, chipped shattered a whole chunk off of that rock. It's in pieces. This took a, a complete side of it off. This one I scum the top off and this one's got some skin marks on it too. Um, this is why it's important to have blades that are heat treated to a safety standard so that they don't shatter. Um, you'll get gouges in them, you'll ding them, sometimes you'll bend them a little bit, um, but they do a very good job of staying together and that's important so that they don't become projectiles. They're just enough ductility in them and they're just heat treated enough to be strong and hard and this is why you want that done. You don't want cheap blades on brush cutters. Finally I want to talk about the structure of the center part of the deck. So we have the two main ribs running the full length of the deck. That's going to be the backbone and we also have these cross members that tie the two ribs together. So that's what's going to add to the torsional rigidity of the deck itself. We have a heavy 3 8 inch plate that doubles up the quarter inch deck plate here in the middle where the gearbox bolts to. So that's going to resist bending uh, when the gearbox sees loads. And this whole box here is covered so it, it's protected from any kind of debris or sticks that might fall on it or jab at it. Uh, it's protected from all sides and also from the top. This box is also where we have the blade bolt access cover so if you need to change your blades, this is the access cover for getting at those bolts. On the back side of the drive system, we have a valve block with a very important safety feature built into it. This relief valve is plumbed into the brake circuit. So when you shut the brush cutter off, the oil flow that's leaving the motor will have to go over the relief valve. That helps brake or stop the system faster so it'll stop in under 10 seconds. Some of the other brush mowers out in the market that are built cheaper might only have a check valve between ports A and B and when you shut those off they may run on for one or two minutes or beyond depending on how fast and how heavy the flywheel is. So this is a really important safety feature. Uh, we also have a check valve built into this that prevents the operator from running the mower backwards. The reason that's important is because if you did run it backwards, you wouldn't be pumping the oil over the relief valve the right direction when you shut it off and it would cause the motor to cavitate. That can be hard on the internals of the motor itself. So it's important that we prevent the operator from running the mower backwards. The tube lines that we use here are really nice for efficiency. They have smooth corners and they're sized well to match the flow rates that this brush cutter is going to see. Um, some other brush cutters on the market might use right angle elbow fittings and they're, um, because of their shape, there takes a lot more pressure to pump the oil through that corner. We have nice smooth corners here. Um, all of this adds up to better performance, less pressure loss, and also less heat buildup. For a brush cutter of this type, uh, one that is predominantly going to be cutting grass and brush and small saplings, it's better to have a, a mower system that's running at a higher speed. And the reason for that is because it does a better job of cutting cleanly. Uh, you're using less energy to, to cut the saplings off than you would if you're hitting them multiple times. And in order to do that, you have to have tip speeds that are they're pretty high. 
the gearbox with the ratio built into it is the secret to getting those higher tip speeds. You'll notice that a lot of direct drive brush cutters, their tip speeds are pretty low. And so the way they try to make up for that is by using heavier stump jumpers uh, or more blades. And that doesn't necessarily give you a better cutting action when it comes to uh, brush and grass and small saplings. What that does mean is that it may have a lot more recovery time. So um, it may take a lot longer for the skid steer to get the brush cutter up to speed. Something to remember about the physics of brush cutting is that when it comes to the energy equation for both linear and rotational energy, the variables are mass and velocity squared. So what that means is you can double the energy by doubling the mass of the system, but you can quadruple the energy by only doubling the speed. And so what we have here is a high speed brush cutter that has energies that are equivalent or greater than some of the direct drive systems with a much heavier flywheel. So what you see in terms of performance is a much cleaner, much more efficient cutting action. For direct drive brush cutters, in order to get enough speed out at the blades, they have to run a really small displacement hydraulic motor. And those motors don't tend to operate as efficiently at higher flow rates. And so that's one of the advantages to using a gearbox setup on a brush cutter. Secondly, there's the economics. These gearboxes have been used for 50 to 75 years on uh, brush cutters used on tractor mowers. And so they're uh, very reliable, they're very well known, they're easy to get parts for, they're used in high quantities and so they're more economical, they're cheaper to buy, um, cheaper to replace if you ever have any problems. They're also well designed uh, specifically for uses just like this. I hope you've enjoyed this video we've done on the commercial brush cutter. Be sure to check back as we make more videos just like this. As always, give us a call or check out our website if you have any questions.